Beloved companions, loyal allies, cherished friends, and sometimes revered idols of people. Now here are ten ancient animals who were deeply adored in life and immortalized from ancient history. Number 10. The Raven That Caused a Riot Pliny recounts the tale of a raven, which was bred and hand-reared by the priests of the Temple of Castor in Rome. This raven was a gifted public speaker, perching upon the rostra facing the forum every morning to greet Emperor Tiberius and his sons, Germanicus and Drusus, by name. Afterward, it would greet the Roman people before flying off to its favorite shoemaker's shop. However, a rival shoemaker, jealous that his competitor was attracting more business due to the raven, killed the bird, ostensibly because it defecated on his shoes. Enraged, the neighborhood chased the raven killer throughout the town and eventually killed him. The raven's murder avenged. It was given a final send-off attended by multitudes, vastly outnumbered those at the funeral of one of Rome's greatest generals, Scipio Emilianus. Pliny points out that Scipio was also murdered, but no one bothered to avenge him. Number 9. Tiberius's Snake The Roman Emperor Tiberius reportedly described his great nephew and protege in depravity, Caligula, as rearing a viper for the Roman people. Interestingly, Tiberius also had an actual pet snake, which he raised with affection and tenderness, a stark contrast to his treatment of his successor. He fed the snake by hand and took it along on his rare trips outside his villa in Capri. On one such trip, a few miles outside Rome on the Via Appia, Tiberius went to feed his snake only to find it dead, its body covered in ants. His soothsayers interpreted this as a potent warning against the power of the mob. Unpopular in Rome at the time, Tiberius swiftly turned around and retreated back south. 8. Antonia's Eel other prominent Romans of the era developed a fondness for eels that went beyond their culinary appeal. Pliny recounts that the orator Quintus Hortensius, who had extensive fish ponds on his country estate at Bauli, was so attached to one of his eels that he wept upon its death. Antonia, the daughter of Mark Antony and Augustus's sister Octavia, and the mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother of Roman emperors, also had a pet muraena at Hortensius's estate. She adorned her eel with gold earrings, turning it into a tourist attraction. People traveled from afar to see Antonia's bejeweled eel. Number 7. Crassus's Eel Muraena, or Mediterranean eels, were a prized delicacy in ancient Rome, often kept in ponds and tanks at the villas of the wealthy. While most ended up on dinner plates, the wealthy freedman Vedius Polio famously trained his eels to devour slaves who displeased him. As one of Rome's richest men, Triumvir Marcus Licinius Crassus also had his own fish ponds. He developed a particular fondness for one eel, adorning it, as Alien describes, with earrings and necklaces set with jewels, just like some lovely maiden. The eel recognized Crassus's voice and came when called, receiving treats and the eel equivalent of cuddles. When the eel died, Crassus had it buried and openly wept. His enemy, Lucius Domitius Ahenobarbus, mocked him on the Senate floor, to which Crassus retorted that Domitius buried three wives and didn't weep. Number 6. Quintus Sertorius's White Fawn Roman general Quintus Sertorius defied Rome in Spain, using guerrilla warfare to successfully resist Rome's attempts to regain control for seven years. One of his most effective tools was his pet white fawn. Captured from its mother and given to Sertorius as a gift, the fawn was tamed to the point where she followed him everywhere and was unbothered by the noise and bustle of army life. Sertorius claimed the fawn was a divine gift from Diana with prophetic powers, using her as a symbol of his connection to the gods. Unfortunately, the fawn did not warn him of the betrayal by his general, Marcus Perpenavento, who assassinated Sertorius at a banquet, ending the Sertorian War in 72 BCE. Number 5. Porus Elephant In the Battle of the Hydaspes, Alexander faced King Porus, the ruler of the Paurava Kingdom in present-day Punjab, who had a formidable steed, a war elephant. Porus's elephant cavalry, 
200 strong and with tusks covered in iron spikes, served as a powerful and impenetrable barrier. While the elephants were too formidable to attack head-on, Alexander ingeniously targeted Porus's flank, eventually trapping the elephants and turning the panicked animals against their own forces. Typically Indian kings led their armies from chariots, but Porus chose to ride his favored war elephant. Ancient historians Plutarch, Arian, and Diodorus Siculus described Porus as exceptionally tall for his time, ranging from 6 3 inches to 7 6, making his choice of mount all the more fitting. Porus shared a bond with his elephant akin to that of Alexander, with his horse Bucephalus. During the battle, both Porus and his elephant were wounded, but the loyal elephant protected Porus, fending off attackers until realizing Porus was in danger of falling. The elephant knelt to lower Porus safely, and then used its trunk to remove the spears from his body. Impressed by Porus's bravery, Alexander appointed him as satrap of his former kingdom. According to Roman historian Quintus Curtius Rufus, the elephant succumbed to its wounds, highlighting the heavy toll the Battle of the Hydaspes took on loyal mounts. Number 4. Princess Isetemkeb's Gazelle Princess Isetemkeb, daughter of the 21st dynasty pharaoh Susenes I, ruled 1047 to 1001 BCE, later became the wife of his half-brother Menkapera, who, as high priest of Amun, ruled the southern kingdom from Thebes around 1047 to 992 BCE. She was interred in the family tomb at Deir el-Bahari around 945 BCE. Alongside Isetemkeb was the mummy of a small gazelle. While a gazelle haunch, packaged as food for the afterlife, was also found in the tomb, Princess Isetemkeb's gazelle was not a mere cut of meat. It was mummified whole, wrapped in elegant blue-trimmed linen bandages, and placed in a custom-built sarcophagus. The lid of the sarcophagus was intricately carved with the gazelle's profile, showcasing its ears, horns, and dignified visage beautifully. Number 3. Prince Thutmose's Cat Cats were revered in ancient Egypt and were honored as deities like Maftit, Bastet, and Sekhmet. Despite this reverence and the discovery of thousands of votive mummies in tombs and temples, there is limited archaeological and historical evidence about pet cats. This makes Ta Miaut, also known as Ta Mu or Ta Meat, the pet cat of Crown Prince Thutmose, particularly significant. Thutmose, the eldest son of the 18th dynasty pharaoh Amenhotep III, around 1391 to 1354 BCE, and Queen Tai, predeceased his father. His tomb, discovered near Memphis in 1892, contained a small, finely decorated sarcophagus featuring the image of a cat in front of an offering table. Inscriptions on the sarcophagus identified it as the resting place of Tamiaut, meaning she-cat. The hieroglyphic inscriptions associated Tamiaut with Osiris and were similar to those on human coffins from that period. In death, Tamiaut was deified and embraced by Isis, Nephthys, Nut, and Geb. The text indicates that Prince Thutmos ordered the coffin during his lifetime, arranging for his beloved Tamiaut to join him in his tomb and in the afterlife. Number 2. Amenemhat III's Crow Game of Thrones draws imaginative inspiration from 12th Dynasty Pharaoh Amenemhat III, ruled around 1860 to 1814 BCE. According to the 3rd century Roman rhetorician Claudius Aelianus, also known as Aelian, Amenemhat III trained a tame crow to deliver messages with the intelligence of a border collie and the reliability of a carrier pigeon. This crow swiftly carried any dispatches to their destinations, knowing precisely where to fly, which spots to pass, and where to pause upon arrival. Amenemhat even had a tomb built for his loyal crow in the city of Crocodilopolis, modern-day Fayum, Egypt. Number 1. Alexander the Great's Horse, Bucephalus Alexander the Great's Horse, Bucephalus, had an unbreakable bond with Alexander long before he earned his title. At the age of 12 or 13, Alexander tamed the formidable Bucephalus, a task his father and the men could not achieve. Alexander realized the horse's stubbornness stemmed from a fear of his shadow. With some understanding and a few gentle words, Alexander quickly mounted Bucephalus, and from that moment, they became inseparable. Together, they conquered much of the world, 
their legends growing alongside each other. According to various ancient sources, Bucephalus either died of old age or from wounds sustained at the Battle of the Hydaspes, now the Jhelum River, in modern-day Pakistan in 326 BCE. Regardless of the exact cause, Bucephalus was buried where he fell, and Alexander founded the city of Alexandria Bucephala in his honor. Thanks for joining us on this journey through history with these beloved animals. If you enjoyed learning about these legendary creatures, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Subscribe to our channel for more fascinating tales from the past, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Let us know in the comments which animal story you found most intriguing, or if there's another historical topic you'd like us to cover. You may also want to watch 10 Most Famous Animals of All Time and discover the 11 most impactful animals supporting life on Earth. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next adventure. Until then, keep exploring and stay curious.